Good morning everyone. It's the 1st of January and I'd just like to wish everybody Happy New Year before I start the first reading of the year. <clears throat> it was now late afternoon. The harvesters moved out at a rapid speed followed by the rebels, even Snake kept up. It had become very dark while they were in the harvesters' territory, but as they moved back into the grasslands, the sun reappeared as if it was a new day. We have about five miles till we reach the village of many arms, said Chantelchay. It won't take long now. We should be there well before nightfall. Another half hour passed in the saddle and they spotted the village. Chantelche said, I will go on ahead and make sure they don't mind guests. He rode off at breakneck speed and the others slowed down to a dawdle. As they got closer, they saw the harvester standing in the gate, waving them in. As they entered the village, they got the shock of their lives. The crowd that surrounded them all had four arms. The ice was broken by the leader of the village whose name was Mactonlo. Hey, look a collection of freaks. They only have two arms. You poor things, how do you cope being so handicapped? The rebels let out roars of laughter and dismounted and were greeted by handshakes and welcomes. Come sit down by the fires and tell us of your adventures. Fox watched as this woman in front of him peeled the potatoes with one pair of hands and peeled carrots with the other while still talking. It's amazing, thought Fox. He looked around the village and noticed a young woman standing by one of the huts. She only had two arms. The woman who had been, who Fox had been watching, tapped him on the shoulder and said, that family may not have four arms, but they have two faces. Best stay away from her, my dear. She will bring you nothing but sorrow. A bit of advice many years later he would regret not listening to, for she was to become in the fullness of time his wife. The leader of the village said, You are welcome to stay the night. We shall care for your wounded man until you return for him. My daughter will care for him. Snake was taken into Mactonlo's hut followed by a very pretty blonde girl with bright blue eyes and a shy smile on her face. Well, looks like Snake's luck has changed, laughed Fox. Fox sat down by Chantelche. Do you think you and Quintimta can control the Guardian of Fire Mountain, inquired Fox. Yes, as long as he's not like that dog of yours. Yes, I can see why not. We can control storm makers and they are not small. Size does not really mean anything, it's brain power. We couldn't influence you, for example, because of your intelligence. But beasts of most sort are no problem. Now get some rest. We still have a two-day trip before we get to the vase of the healers. Yes, you're right. Chantelche and Fox wandered off to get some sleep. The others had already bedded down. Old Grey Bear was screaming in his sleep. Black Knight was snoring and Opium and the two girls were fast asleep. The camp was at peace so Fox laid down and dozed off. Patch snuggled up to his master. 
It seemed like Fox had only just gone to sleep when he was nudged by Old Grey Bear. What? Is it my turn for guard duty already? Seems like I've only had a nax. nap, Fox said sleepily. No, it's time to get up, Fox. Dawn's here, answered Old Grey Bear. Dawn who? said Fox with a smile on his face. Come on, let's get go and get some breakfast, said his brother. So the two of them wandered off to eat and get ready to move out. Fox looked round the camp. All the rebels were busy and, and had already eaten. Black Knight was cleaning his sword and armour. Opium was cleaning stones from his horse's hooves. Ibex, Moose and Falcon were sparring with each other. Cat was grooming his horse. Oak was chatting to one of the harvesters about woodwork and Bluebird and Running Deer were chatting to Snake as he sat in a chair outside Macton Lowe's hut, taking in the morning sun. So the girls were asking him, what's his daughter's name then? She is called Wampasset, meaning Misty Dawn in our village, replied Snake. Oh, that's really pretty. Do you think you'll be okay here while we are away, said Running Deer. Oh yes, I shall be more than okay. Between you and me, I think Wampak Set is sweet on me, even though I'm handicapped. I must admit, I feel very at home here. Snake smiled at the girls and winked. Running Deer and Bluebird looked at each other and giggled.